morning and welcome to your evening news bulletin with Television Tonga News. Making headlines, People's Republic of China approves to fund a 5.4 million baang expansion project of Bilolevu Airport in Hapai. Quarantine department seized more than 60% of the frozen meat inside an imported container from Taiwan. The Honorable Minister of Public Enterprises to represent all the government enterprises in receiving an award from Asian Development Bank. And the Ministry of Health records another two dengue fever cases for this year. These are more stories together with news from the Pacific, sports and the latest weather bulletin later on. Now for the news in details, I'm Kalolaine Tonglava Paletua. The government of the People's Republic of China has agreed to fund the construction work to expand the Salote Pilolevu Airport in Hapai. The Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Sami Vaipulu, confirmed this in an exclusive interview with radio and television Tonga News. And we'll join Kali Sitionuku with more on that story. In an exclusive interview with the Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Sami Vaipulu, he elaborated on the construction work to be done, funded by the People's Republic of China. The runway at the Salote Pilolevu Airport will be enlarged further by 200 meters with an additional 20 meters expansion towards the sea. The construction work will be carried out towards the western side of the airport, which includes the construction of the parking lot. Other maintenance work will be carried out to the runway. This project is estimated to the tune of 5.4 million baanga. Deputy Prime Minister also says that one of the recommendations submitted under the project proposal for Pilolevu Airport was an alternative airport for Lupe Pau at Vamao. He also adds that for the renovation project of the transit area, and the terminal at Pilolevu Airport will await funding from the World Bank. The project for the expansion of the Salote Pilolevu Airport in Hapai is expected to be carried out this year. Reporting for Television Talk News, I'm Kali Situyanuko. The Ministry of Public Enterprises is due to receive a special award from the Asian Development Bank as part of its recognition of the successful operations of all public enterprises in Tonga and how they comply with the bank's policy metrics. Linda Afiliai with that report. Speaking exclusively to radio and television Tonga News, the Onopo Minister of Public Enterprises, Fea Vagata, confirmed the awards that is expected to be presented for the public enterprises in Tonga. <laughs> There is an invitation from ADB to all public enterprises minister in Asia, Pacific and Caribbean countries to attend this award. I will be attending the program at the end of this month together with the chief executive officer of our ministry. Tonga came in second place in this award and I am pleased with the outcomes and improvement from all governments and the prices. Although Tonga is ranked second on this award, however, Tonga tops the Pacific Islands. However, he also spoke more about the work carried out by Asian Development Bank to its development partners. The Asian Development Bank is working together with all public enterprises ministry in the Pacific Islands and the Caribbean to assess how they operate. This includes the selection of board directors, performances of the public enterprises and others. At the moment, the Ministry of Public Enterprises is complying with 70% of the policy metrics required by the Asian Development Bank and we are looking forward to increase it to 100%. Last year, I have sent out the letter of expectation to all the chairmen in the board of directors and I have stated the requirements to follow the policy metrics. The award is expected to be presented at the Asian Development Bank headquarters in Sydney, Australia during a special ceremony at the end of this month. Meanwhile, the Public Enterprises Minister also highlighted the importance to follow in this policy matrix from the ADB because it will help with the approval of its budget support program for its partners. For Television Tonga News, I'm Linda Filiai. The quarantine division confiscated a 20-feet container of frozen meat at the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Forestry and Fisheries premises at the Quinsalote Wharf. The container arrived from Taiwan. 
Xin Lan Tu with the details. The confiscated container includes cooked and raw meat amongst other items inside. One of the deputy directors of the ministry looking after the quarantine division, Dr. Vilamikami, told Radio and Television Tonga News that they've analysed the container and have released a few of the items. <laughs> He adds the reason behind their move is to protect Tonga from any disease that may harm its biodiversity. The head of the quarantine division said they are still analyzing the container together with related stakeholders like the Ministry of Labor, Customs Division and the Ministry of Health. According to Dr. Kami, they were informed of the container coming into Tonga. They started their risk assessment then and ruled that it was a genuine mistake. Therefore, they have warned the owner of the container. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sinilato. The 45-year-old man from Manuka, alleged for manslaughter by negligence, has been released on bail yesterday. This is in regards to the death of another 45-year-old man from Navdoka on March 5th. The incident occurred at Kalefesia Private Island in Hapai, alleged for using hooker diving. The bail condition includes 2,000 baanga for the accused, with 1,000 baanga each paid by two reliable sureties. The accused will appear in Magistrate Court next Monday. Meanwhile, Tonga police are calling on the public to be aware of the danger of using hooker diving method, which involves an engine on the boat that bumps uh, compressed air to a diver below. The accused will appear at the Magistrate Court next week, while police continues investigation into the matter. The Ministry of Health has recorded another two cases of dengue fever for this year, adding to the other dengue cases which was previously recorded in the Ministry of Health for this year alone. The Director of Health, Dr. Siala Kaola, confirmed this to radio and television Tonga news this morning. Here's Dr. Linda Filiai with the details. The Health Director, Dr. Siale Akaola, is warning the public to minimize the threat of an outbreak of dengue by cleaning up surrounding areas and homes so it can free of mosquito breeding areas. The Health Director says although one man from the first two patients suffering from fever has died, however, he was admitted to hospital for other medical reasons such as pneumonia. Dr. Akawala says they've already conducted medical blood tests for the patient and it was clear that he was in a stable condition from the fever. However, the cause of death is not yet confirmed. <laughs> It was recorded that he was suffering from dengue fever on the 24th of January after confirming it from the result of his blood test. It was a positive case of dengue fever and indicators like platelets and hemoglobins were low, which is a sign of dengue. His case was not risky. However, the same patient was also reported to the hospital for different sickness, which was pneumonia on February 3rd. We gave him treatment and he was remained at the hospital for three days. We carried out another blood test and it was clear that he had recovered from Tengi fever. The last death reported from Tengi case in Tonga was in 2008. Reporting for Television Tonga News, I'm Linda Filiai. An Asian man, Yi Fu Yu, from Kolofo'o accused for the murder of another Asian man in 2012 has been released on bail. The murder case was reported at an electronic shop at the railway road. The bail condition for Mr. Yu is 2,000 baanga and for two sureties to pay in 1,000 baanga each. Mr. Yu is released on bail and his passport has been submitted to the Supreme Court, banning him from traveling out of the country. The Asian man is expected to reappear at the magistrate court on the 26th of this month. He is alleged for the same murder case together with Makalatu of Mataika. Mr. Yu was released on bail after he was represented by William Clive Edwards Jr. in the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, his co-accused, Makalatu, is still remained in police custody. It is important for youth to live in peace and harmony and also to uphold a friendship relationship because of their future. His Serene Highness Prince Tupelehake emphasized this while delivering his keynote address at the Tonga College 2014 Prefect's inauguration ceremony. We'll join Fanonga Koso with the details. 
According to the principal of Tonga College, Kalaftoni Latu, they invited prefects from other schools, such as Dupo College and Liahona High School, to join in the program. Mr. Latu says the aim is to gather students together, especially prefects from rival schools, and advise them on keeping peace within them. The principal of Tonga College also says, during the prefect's inauguration ceremony, His Serene Highness highlighted to the guests the importance of humility. During the prefect's inauguration ceremony, His Serene Highness stressed various reasons which contribute to school brawls. This includes mocking others, revealing secrets of other schools, jealousy, misunderstanding and many more. But the very important part His Serene Highness highlighted was that despite these selfish manners and unpleasant behavior, it is important to remember that we are all human. Humanity is important. At the end of the day, another human being is more important than any school brawls. Meanwhile, Tonga College principal adds they are planning to host special schools get-together as part of the method to reduce the social problems affecting the youth in Tonga. We are planning to bring sports teams from schools and train them together in order for students to have a fair idea on how to keep peace within the schools. We also put on an agreement with the Dubo College to combine and march together at any event here in the country, including the march for the opening and closing of Parliament. The Tonga College 2014 prefix inauguration ceremony was held at the Free Wesleyan Church of Hadeho. It ended with a special luncheon program which was held at the Adele Indoor Stadium. For Television Tonga News, I am Fononga Vikoso. Disseminating of information from non-government organizations and the civil society form of Tonga to the public will be easier and faster now with the new technological equipment donated by the Pacific Media Assistance Scheme or PACMES. Anasim Falikao know the details. The communication officer of the Civil Society Forum of Tonga, Andrew Doi Api, told Radio and Television Tonga News that this is made possible after the Civil Society received assistance under PACMES. <laughs> With such assistance, it will boost the awareness programs from all NGOs. I believe in public are more informed about the NGOs are doing. It will help them to know about the NGOs and where to go when they need help. He adds they will host a training program for all representatives from different NGOs on how to properly use the equipment and to maintain it. Mr. De Ampi says before they used to disseminate information through Radio Tonga 1 and Television Tonga. Radio Tonga 1, the AM station, is one of the media outlets that carries out our information in Tonga Tapu and reaches to the outer islands. Meanwhile, the estimated amount of the assistance is around 40,000 paanga. For Television Tonga News, I'm Anasia Falegaono. Students and villagers in Bea now fully understand how to keep their water supply clean at all times. This is the outcome of a special training hosted for the villagers, which aims at informing the villagers on how to keep their water clean. Salam Fulivai with that report. Participants who took part in the training in Bea include students from Loving Amalia Middle School, men and women of the village. A representative from the Ministry of Health was there to talk more about the importance of making sure that the water is clean before they consume. Speaking to radio and television Tonga News, was Wuholoto Tonga says they are happy to take part in the training because they learn various hygienic lessons. For example, when the septic is full, the waste leaks out and mixes with the water because the water pipes are damaged. He adds that this was a new pipe they put up last year and just this year they noticed that the water pipes was getting dirty. The town officer, Siopet Lolo, told Radio and Television Tonga News that there is hope for this program. We hope for the best out of this program. I know we will benefit from it. Our water supply will be improved. Also speaking to Radio and Television Tonga News was a student from Loving Amalia Middle School. She says 
that this program is very important to her and her fellow mates. I'm happy to be a part of this program because I know how to test for the cleanliness of the water supply. This program helps us to learn more on how to differentiate the clean from dirty water. I will share this knowledge with our family and friends at school. The training program was organized by the Tonga Community Development Trust, funded by the European Union and the Australian Aid with the 4CA project. For Television Tonga News, I'm Salamo Fulivai. And a husband has been charged by Tonga police, alleged for raping of a teenage girl last week. The victim was living together with the accused and his wife in their home. The accused will remain in custody to reappear in magistrate court later on, while police continues investigation. And that's the local scene for tonight. Stay watching for more news from the Pacific.